Can you see why kids love the taste of today's snack? Find out next on Junk Food. Yeah, welcome to Junk Feud, the podcast about junk food, where we rate and review mystery treats to determine which one will be the undisputed champion of snacks. I'm your host, Mike. Alongside me, as always, Alyssa. Dad. Yeah, bud. So, did you hear the rumor about butter? The rumor about butter. Did I hear the rumor about butter? No. Oh, well, in that case, I'm not going to spread it. (laughs) Oh, no. That was a good one, too. That was a good... You think that was a good one? Yeah. Oh, boy. Well, that was a dad joke, a joke you tell to your dad. If you'd like to submit a dad joke for Alyssa to tell me on the show, you can send it into us via Twitter at JunkFeudPod or via email at JunkFeudPod at gmail.com. Liss. It's almost Christmas. Oh, boy. <laughs> Were you waiting to say that? Yeah. Yeah. And it is almost Christmas. Welcome back once again to the world's yeetest podcast, Alyssa. Yeah. I have just... Two words for you. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving blowout. What's that? Thanksgiving blowout. Review, brah. You remember Review, brah, when he did that on his Thanksgiving show? Yeah. He just deadpans and says, Thanksgiving blowout. Well, this is our first ever Thanksgiving blowout on Junk Feud. Liz, it's Thanksgiving. Yeah. Like today is Thanksgiving. It is? Uh, yeah, remember, we record these ahead of time. This is going to air on Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. Happy Thanksgiving, Happy guys. Thanksgiving, everybody. Yeah. What are, you, what are you guys eating? Yeah. Some nice turkey. Ooh, I'll have some. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Thanksgiving is a holiday known for food, obviously. Yeah. But not necessarily for snacks. Thanksgiving is like a meal food holiday. Yeah. But there are still some snacks that you can eat on Thanksgiving. What kind of snacks do you like to have on Thanksgiving? Um, well, I have Lay's chips. On Thanksgiving? Yeah. You just have like a regular bag of Lay's potato chips. Nothing special for the season. Nothing associated with the big meal you're about to eat. Not really. You know what we have as a snack on Thanksgiving usually? What? Grammy makes Italian wedding soup. What's that? That's like the meatball and escarole soup that we have before the meal. Oh, I don't eat that. What? I've never had that before. Oh, it's like a delicacy. Oh. There are tiny little meatballs in it and fried bread and the the leafy greens. It's so good. No, I've seen it. But you've never had it. I just haven't had it. Because you were eating like plain Lay's potato chips. Yeah, me and Soph will usually just, I don't know, share some bread. Share some bread. Your your snack on Thanksgiving pre-meal is some bread. Yeah. And plain we usually potato just, chips. We'll just like pick around at the big table of food. You know what that sounds like to me? What? You know Charlie Brown's Thanksgiving, right? Yeah. Where Snoopy makes his big Thanksgiving dinner plate? Yeah. And it's full of snacks. It's not actually food. It's like... Jelly beans and pretzel sticks and buttered toast. Yeah, that's basically like mine. That sounds a lot like what you do. You know, you remember we've talked about Dinosaur Dracula on the show before. Yes. The website that's all about retro food and toys and fun things like that. Yeah. Well, every year, Matt from Dinosaur Dracula replicates the Snoopy Thanksgiving meal. He makes the big plate with the buttered toast and the pretzel sticks and the jelly beans, and then he like shows people how to make it, and then he eats it. We should do that. That sounds pretty good. I wouldn't mind doing that. Yeah. Yeah. If you had to make your own, like, big junk food Thanksgiving plate like Snoopy does, what would you have on it? A Thanksgiving plate full of snacks. Hmm. Let's hear it. Well, I'd have definitely bread, but (laughs) Hawaiian bread. Hawaiian rolls? Okay. Good start. Um, even though this isn't really, like, a snack, you have to have mashed potatoes. That's just, like... A Hawaii- rule. A Hawaiian roll and mashed potatoes. You're trending like dangerously close to just an actual Thanksgiving plate here. Okay, go ahead. And hmm, pretzels sound good, actually. Pretzels. So pretzel sticks, pretzel twists, big sourdough, hard pretzels, soft pretzels. What kind of pretzels? The like little, the really thin sticks. Small pretzel sticks. Got it. And so we're up to Hawaiian rolls, mashed potatoes, and pretzel sticks. Yeah. And goldfish. And goldfish crackers. Goldfish, yeah. Listen, that is like... Uh, I'm not done, I'm not done. Oh, you're not... Okay, keep going. Um, What are those called? They're like triangle chips. Doritos? Bugles. Oh, pita chips. But they have to be flavored Parmesan cheese. Parmesan pita chips. Yeah. This is outrageous. This is mine. What's yours, Dad? My, oh, well, yeah, I guess you put me on the spot. Yeah, it's something to think about. After I put you on the spot, huh? Uh-huh. So a big plate of like 
junk food that's your Thanksgiving feast that wouldn't be traditional. Yeah. You know what? I'd, I could probably stick with some things that we've had here on the show already. I'd probably have some brown sugar and cinnamon Pop-Tarts. Really? Yeah. Maybe like a big heap of popcorn, <laughs> two Reese's peanut butter eggs, a mound of Cool Ranch Doritos, and then like, spoiler alert for later, right smack in the middle, a Snickerdoodle Oreo. How does that sound? Really good. Really good. Yeah. Yeah. I think like if I was offered the choice and someone came up to me with the big traditional heaping plate of Thanksgiving dinner, the turkey and the gravy and the stuffing and the mashed potatoes, and they said, you can have this or you can have this plate of crap that you've just described. I would pick the meal. You would pick the meal? Yeah. I might take the junk food. Really? Yeah, I can have Thanksgiving every year, but when am I going to get to have a big plate of just all the things that I like? Whatever you want. Yeah, I guess I am an adult. I can probably just do that whenever I want, right? Yeah. Dad, you got you to gotta, you gotta actually think. How about, so we talked about what our Thanksgiving plate would be for dinner list. What about desserts? What are some of your Thanksgiving desserts that you like? Ooh, dirt. Worms and dirt. Excellent choice. That's a big one in See, our I th- family. I think that's more of like a summer dessert rather no. than a Thanksgiving dessert, but I guess you could have it anytime. No, no, no. That's chocolate. It's warm. It's Dark. definitely not warm. Well, what if you wanted it warm? Uh, I don't know about that. There's a lot of dairy in there. Well, we could have cookies, milk. Cookies and milk, sure. Ginger snaps. Ginger snaps would be a great one. You know what Thanksgiving is traditionally, Liz? What? Thanksgiving is like a pie holiday. Oh, yeah. Where you have lots of pies. There are cake holidays. Apple pie, pumpkin pie. Yeah, there are cake holidays and then there are pie holidays. Like a birthday is a cake holiday. You have birthday cake or a cupcake, but Thanksgiving is a pie holiday. Or in my case, you have Polish ice. You had Polish water ice on Thanksgiving? No, oh, on your birthday. For two years in a row now. That's right. Oh, yeah. Good call. I hadn't even thought about that. That's true. But you wouldn't have it on Thanksgiving. No, probably not. No, you would have, like you said, pumpkin pie, sweet potato pie, and of course- Banana cream pie. Banana cream pie was what my grandmother served whenever we had Thanksgiving. That is the best pie. Yeah, I think that's my favorite pie of all time. Maybe, I shouldn't say this out loud, but I think that might be my favorite food of all time. Like, full stop. The entire, in the entire world- we have My to do cheesecake to on here. Yeah, we're sh- for sure going to do cheesecake. Can we do that like next? Can we have cheesecake next after this week? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the schedule, but definitely not next week. Do you know why? Why? Because next week, Alyssa, is when we start Merry Snacksmas. Christmas. Yeah. Oh, I'm so excited. That's right. Four weeks, at least four weeks, all of December, holiday themed snacks here on Junk Feud. For Merry Snacksmas. Dad, I looked when the next time it's going to snow. Uh-huh. And it said it's not going to snow until the end of November. Oh, no. Well, it's the end of November right now, so hopefully that's oh, well, happening like, as you listen to this. And I hope that it is, and I hope you're enjoying a nice whiteout outside. Yeah. From the comfort of your home, by a nice warm fire, with a mug of hot chocolate, and maybe a big slice of apple pie where you're getting into those warming spices, the cinnamon scents that are associated with the season, and Liz. What? That reminds me of this week's snack. What is it, Dad? Up next on Junk Feud, it's... Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Liz, what do you know about Cinnamon Toast Crunch? I know that it is crunchy, and there's cinnamon, and it's delightful. Yeah, that's a pretty good assessment of Cinnamon Toast Crunch, I would say. Cinnamon Toast Crunch, the breakfast cereal, debuted in 1984. Liz, what else was going on in 1984? Do you have any idea? That's not too far back. You might yeah. still be experiencing the fallout of some popular cultural events that happened in 1984. Well, you were alive. I definitely was alive. You're like two years old, though. I remember things that were happening in 1984. How? Well, I probably <laughs> don't remember them from like primacy, from actual events, but I do remember experiencing things or remembering things that happened in 1984. Do you want to hear what some of them were? What? What? Okay, uh, Steve Jobs, you've heard that name before. Yeah. Steve Jobs and Apple Computers launched the Macintosh computer, and they had this really amazing television commercial that debuted during the Super Bowl that was themed around George Orwell's 1984, a book we've talked about on the show before. Yeah. Yeah, that was sort of like the debut of really big, expensive, high production value television commercials. It was kind of a big deal at the time. A very big deal. Yeah, and Mac computers are still a big deal. Mac computers? Yeah, the Macintosh. The MacBook Pro is like Mac is short for Macintosh. Oh. Like Macintosh is a type of Apple. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense, right? Yeah. 
the first untethered spacewalk happened. That's absolutely terrifying to me. What's a spacewalk? What does a spacewalk sound like? What do you think it is? Like where you walk on space. Where you walk in space. Oh, wait, untethered? Yeah. yeah. What? Insane, right? Why would someone do that? Like someone put on a spacesuit and went outside of the spacecraft or space station without being tethered to it. Why? Yeah, never for me, for sure. I wouldn't even go tethered. Like one slip and you're out into the infinite vastness of space forever. Seriously, like how do you even get back? You don't. You sure don't. It's not like they're going to come after you. Nope, but they made it. It was fine. Everything was okay. Oh. Yeah. Tetris list. The game of Tetris debuted in the Soviet Union. What's that? You've never played Tetris, the video game? No. The little shapes made up of tetram tetraminos, four block shapes? No. You try to put them into configurations to make lines? You've never played Tetris? No. Oh my gosh. Well, guess what we're doing right after this? What? What do you mean what? Playing Tetris. We can't. Uh, we sure can. It's really quick. I have a soccer game. All right. Well, whatever. Hey, speaking of sports, the Summer Olympics were in Los Angeles in 1984. There's Summer Olympics? Yeah. The Olympics, like the the big Olympics that happen are the Summer Olympics. Oh. Running and swimming, track and field, baseball, soccer, all that kind of stuff. In two years, it's going to be in Paris. That's right. That's exciting. Speaking of European countries, the first episodes of Thomas the Tank Engine aired in the United Kingdom. Thomas the Train? Yeah, Thomas the Train in 1984. Can you believe that? I feel like I've never watched that before. You've never actually watched the show. You've played with the trains. You've seen the exhibit at the Liberty Science Center when it was there. Yeah, I don't think I've ever actually watched it, though. You know what's funny? I don't think your brother, who was a big Thomas the Train fan, has ever actually watched an episode of the show either. Yeah. He just read the books and played with the toys. Yeah. Listen, in 1984, the Detroit Tigers won the World Series. Shout out to Jim and Jenny. Good job. Yeah, that's right. Ghostbusters. The movie came out. We watched that last night. That's something I actually know what That's it is. something you know and remember, right? Yeah. Culturally relevant to you. Ghostbusters, 1984. Yeah, we a have big a big deal. set right there. That's right. I'm looking at it right now. The, uh, the Playmobil Ghostbusters Firehouse. Yeah, Ghostbusters is a big hit in our house. You know, I went to the real exterior of the Ghostbusters Firehouse when I was in New York not too long ago. Really? Yeah, it's really cool looking. I'm still so mad I couldn't come to that. Yeah, it's a bummer. Maybe next time. You say that every time. <laughs> it's true. Well, I mean it every time. But it never happens any time. Liz, Ronald Reagan won the presidential election in a landslide in 1984, defeated Walter Mondale. Who's Ronald Reagan? Ronald Reagan, the actor? No, no. You don't remember that from Back to the Future? No. Doc asks Marty, who's president in 1985, and he says, Ronald Reagan. And Doc says, Ronald Reagan, the actor? Oh, someone in my school was being Marty McFly for Halloween. Yeah. Did you run up to him and say, Marty, we've got to go back to the future? No. No? Well, you I just, missed opportunity there. I couldn't remember like what, like M Marty's name, so I had to go up and physically ask what he was being, because I, I remembered it was from Back to the Future, though. Yeah. Do you remember what I dressed up as for Halloween last year? Marty McFly. Marty from Back to the Future, that's right. Yeah. It's an easy costume. He literally looked exactly like you too. That's right. He had the sunglasses, the vest, yeah, the shirt. Yeah, it was great. Liz, speaking of something else that happened in 1984, Chrysler, the automobile manufacturer, introduced the minivan, the first ever branded minivan from Chrysler in 1984. I'm going to ask again. What is that? What is a minivan? No. What is Chrysler? Yeah. Chrysler is a car company. Oh, I've never yeah. heard of that one. Yeah, they make a minivan. The town and country. I feel like I've heard of more stuff from like so long ago than I have not that long ago. <laughs> well, that means you're paying attention in history class or social studies. Thank you, Mr. Labar. That's right. Thank you. Shout out to Mr. Labar. Yeah. Liz, the other thing that we were talking about today, the reason that we're here, Cinnamon Toast Crunch debuted in 1984. According to the General Mills website, which manufactures Cinnamon Toast Crunch, it is a combination of Cine Crunch, which are these little toasted wheat and rice squares about 1.37 centimeters on a side. Oh, you, you measured it. I did measure it. Uh, Cine Dust, which is the cinnamon sugar seasoning that's on top of the squares. Well, what about this one, Dad? Don't. Oh, save that for later. That's a good one. <laughs> And finally, cinnamon milk, which is the sweet and spicy milk that's left in the bottom of the bowl. There are actual names for the components. Cinnamon crunch, cinnamon dust, and cinnamon milk. Cinnamon milk? Why is it spicy? Well, it's just like not spicy hot, but spicy like a spice, as in cinnamon is a spice. Oh. Yeah. Okay, now I understand. Yeah, that makes sense. General Mills says, Cinnamon Toast Crunch is the perfect snack for kids, adults, and any other life form. 
They actually had that ad copy on their website. I that I don't get that weird marketing thing that they do where brands will say stuff like that. It doesn't make any sense to me. It doesn't. You yeah. know what else doesn't make sense, Ed? What's that? The Yeetist podcast. Uh, I think it makes perfect sense because we are the Yeetist podcast. Okay. Believe what you want, Dad. <laughs> That's right. And I choose to believe that. Okay. I also believe, Liz, that Cinnamon Toast Crunch is the best-selling cereal in the United States online, according to the market research company Food Manufacturing. Really? Yeah, you know what else it is? What? Taylor Swift's favorite cereal. I bet that one's a big hit for you. Yeah, I love Tay-Tay, and I love <laughs> that this is her favorite cereal. <laughs> oh, Dad. She also likes junk food lists. you know what her other favorite comfort food is? Pop-Tarts? Yeah, Pop-Tarts, last week's contender. Can you believe that? Yeah, boo-hoo. Yeah, I know. Oh, what a bummer. Yeah. I- I'm telling you, this movie theater popcorn is an absolute juggernaut. I'm surprised Oreos didn't win the entire thing so far. I know, but they just, they ran into that movie theater popcorn buzzsaw. That was tough. Yeah, the the popcorn has been going through, like, at least, well, so that was episode four. This is, this this is, is going to be number five three? because we took our excursion for spooky season, remember? Oh, yeah. Yeah. But I think today's contender has a fighting chance. In fact... I think it has a really good chance. Cinnamon Toast Crunch, designed to look like little squares of cinnamon toast. A very common, but I think very tasty breakfast list. I'm really excited to see this. Have you ever actually had cinnamon toast? Like, not Cinnamon Toast Crunch the cereal, but the actual food cinnamon toast. Yes. Yeah, I think it's... You've made me try it. I've definitely made it for you in the mornings. It was one of my favorite breakfasts when I was little and I needed a break from like the usual bowl of cereal that I would have in the morning, which is ironic because we're going to have cinnamon toast as a cereal in just a moment yeah the fact that breakfast cereal itself exists not just cinnamon toast crunch but all breakfast cereal is possibly Alyssa, an evolution of a thing called milk toast which was a popular 19th century breakfast where you would toast a piece of bread you would slather it with butter and then you would crumble up that toasted bread into a bowl and cover it with sweetened milk and eat it with a spoon does that sound kind of weird yeah yeah in fact it's not the first time that Toast had been eaten in a weird way as a breakfast food. In fact, the first appearance of cinnamon toast itself is even older than the concept of milk toast. There is an Italian cookbook from the 1400s, Alyssa, called The Neapolitan Cook, which has an original recipe for cinnamon toast that also has on it, get this, mozzarella cheese. Ew. Yeah, it's like like a cheese on toast dish. Remember we talked about Welsh rarebit when we were talking about Cheez-Its? Oh, yeah. Cheese on toast? Yeah. There is cheese on toast, but also the addition of cinnamon on top of that cheesy toast in Italy in the 1400s. I still have to make our dictionary. Yeah, well, you should work on that. You can add to it, Liz, McCormick, because it's a company we've talked about a few times in the past. This is that spice company that popularized cinnamon in the new world. They say there is no better use for cinnamon sugar than shaking it over melty butter on hot, crisp toast. And McCormick says it was first seen, cinnamon toast that is, in the United States, or what's now the United States, in the 1600s. In the 1600s. Yeah, there's some history of a thing called cinnamon rusk. Rusk is like a twice-baked bread that was brought into Michigan's Upper Peninsula, shout out to all the youpers up there, by Finnish immigrants to a town called Trenary, where it's now called a Trenary toast. It's cinnamon toast that's baked twice and crumbled into a bowl of milk, just like milk toast that we just talked about. Have you ever tried it? Have I ever tried trenary toast in milk? Yeah. No, but I think that's something we can make pretty easily. I mean, we're fairly adept at making our own cinnamon toast. Yeah. There's a bunch of different ways to make it too. I used to make it the very simple way. Toast the bread, spread the butter on top, and then shake on the cinnamon sugar. List when I was a kid, grandma had this small brown Tupperware container that we, the only thing we ever kept in there was cinnamon sugar. A mixture of like, I think it's like a quarter cup of sugar to a tablespoon of cinnamon or something like that is the is the ratio remember we had talked about tupperware in the past tupperware parties yeah we kept cinnamon sugar in that little brown tupperware and i'm sure that she still has it when we would open it up it would make the entire room smell like cinnamon it smelled so good and i have this incredible sense memory of that little thing and the smell of cinnamon in our old kitchen just sort of like indicating to me that it was breakfast time Mm, that smells so good yeah it was great do we have cinnamon sugar Oh, we sure do. In fact, we have a little shaker from Penzi's Spices in Pittsburgh, Liz. Did you take it? I've got it downstairs. No, but I mean, like, did you take it? Did I take what? It from the restaurant. Did, no, no, no. Penzi's Spices is a place where you can, 
uh, buy spices online. It's not a restaurant. I certainly did not steal the cinnamon sugar <laughs> shaker from somewhere in Pittsburgh. No, we buy those. In fact, grandma usually buys them because she knows we like it so much. Ooh. You know who else likes cinnamon toast? Uncle Matt. Uh, mm, you know what? That's a good question. I bet he probably does. I was thinking of Liz, the pioneer woman. Remember the pioneer woman from television? Mom watches her cooking show on the Food Network sometimes. Uh pioneer woman. yeah oh oh yes with like the straight like red hair that's right that's her she makes her cinnamon toast by smushing together the butter and the cinnamon sugar ahead of time and then adding vanilla and nutmeg which is kind of an interesting addition then she spreads that on already toasted bread and then puts the whole thing under the broiler in the oven until it's all crispy and caramelized on top that sounds pretty good we might have to try that sure yeah segment switcher upper <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of trying things, if you were around in 1984 and you wanted to try Cinnamon Toast Crunch, originally you would just be eating a plain wheat and rice square cereal. It didn't actually have the cinnamon sugar on it yet. It wasn't until a little bit later that this plain biscuit had cinnamon sugar added to it by a food scientist whose name is John Mendish. John Mendish. Yeah, guess what? John is still working. He's a consultant in food science. He's a uh, chemical engineer with an MBA. He has a profile page on his consultancy site, and it says that he mainly enjoys reading nonfiction spiritual texts and golfing. So, okay. I tried golfing. Oh, yeah. How'd that go? Segment switcher offer. <laughs> that good? You don't want to talk about it? Yeah. Oh, uh, well, I bet you liked riding the cart. Yeah, I like driving and riding it. Yeah, that's my favorite part of golfing. I'm not a golfer. Otherwise, I was really bad. Yeah, well... Don't feel bad. Golf is uh, one of the only sports in the world where the absolute best players in the entire world are still bad at it. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard. Liz. What? John Mendish worked with a product manager at General Mills named Elizabeth Track, and they took the idea to add cinnamon sugar to the wheat and rice squares from a children's contest that they had run, where they were asking kids for new ideas to make their cereals better because they knew kids were going to be eating them. So... Someone just came up with this? Someone wrote in and said, you should add cinnamon sugar to your wheat and rice squares. And they said, hey, that's actually a really good idea. And they did it. And the winner of that contest got a collection of Hot Wheels cars list. Well, I bet they would have much rather had a big like shout out instead. Uh, yeah, probably they would have liked to have a percentage of the profits from cinnamon sugar on cereal and cinnamon toast crunch moving forward. But instead, they got some Hot Wheels cars. And guess what? Wait, Dad. If yes. They, if they got like 10% of... What Cinnamon Toast Crunch makes? If they had 10% of the total revenues for Cinnamon Toast Crunch so that, over the last 40 years? So that would be like... Billions of dollars. Yeah. Yeah. But instead, they got Hot Wheels cars. Yeah. There have actually been lists Cinnamon Toast Crunch branded Hot Wheels cars. Did you know that? I hope they got some of those because... That, that's a way to rub it in. Well, I doubt it because they didn't come out until a little bit later. There was a Shelby Cobra in 1997 and then a Ford Co. delivery truck in 2011, both with Cinnamon Toast Crunch branding on them. Oh, yeah. does Chase have any of those? He doesn't, but uh, I took a look and you can find them pretty easily on eBay. They are readily available. They're probably somewhere in Target. Maybe. I mean, it's it's very common for Hot Wheels cars to change appearance. And, and Alyssa, the cereal Cinnamon Toast Crunch has changed its appearance a few times as well. Really? Yeah, at first in the mid-80s, there were these ridges on them. They looked a little bit more like golden grams then. And there was a uniform dusting of cinna dust on the outside. But then, uh, a little bit later, they were updated. They became a little bit flatter in shape. And then in 1995, there was a marketing blitz called The Taste You Can See. And they added visible cinnamon swirls to the outside of the cereal that they still have today. In fact, you can see them sort of little brown swirls on the outside of the cereal pieces there. Oh, yeah. It looks like a little... You know what this reminds me of? The the cinnamon the cinnamon um sugar pop tart. That's what like the icing looks like. Yeah, it does a little bit. It's about the same shade. That's right. And that worked, Liz. More recently, the cinnamon toast crunch mascot has changed to the cinnamoji on the box. Those little crunchy squares. There was a cinnamoji box to try to capitalize on and appeal to younger consumers who were dialed into things like emojis. Oh yeah. You remember those? I feel like we saw those at Walmart. Yeah, we sure did. And it seems to work. Young consumers seem to like Cinnamon Toast Crunch just fine. In fact, I found on Reddit, Liz, there's a 21-year-old Redditor who did an Ask Me Anything, and he claims to have eaten three bowls of Cinnamon Toast Crunch every single morning for the past 15 years. How? Oh my goodness. Yeah, that seems like a lot. In fact, there was a reporter for Thrillist, a very popular website, that tried to do a 
breakfast cereal cleanse, and he ate nothing but Cinnamon Toast Crunch for an entire week. An entire week? Yeah, an entire week for every meal. He had 81 bowls of cereal. We should do that, Dad. I don't think so. If you read that article, you will find out that he felt very, very bad afterwards. Oh, maybe we should try it for a day. Well, if we wanted to do that, we could try a few different variants lists outside of the United States. Did you know that Cinnamon Toast Crunch has different names? Really? Yeah, in the United Kingdom, it's called Curiously Cinnamon. Oh my goodness, there's a lot of names. Mm -hmm. In the French-speaking province of Quebec, Canada, it's called Croque Canel. Croque Canel. Croque Canel, that's fun to say. Croque Canel. Croque Canel. In Quebec. 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 You were close, though. Quebec. It does look a little bit like Quebec, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. If you were uh, somewhere else in Europe and maybe some parts of Latin America list, you could eat Cine Minis. Cine Minis. That's fun to say, too, isn't it? Cine Minis. Wait, what, what's it called in London? Uh, in London, which is in the United Kingdom, it would be Curiously Cinnamon. We got to get some of those when we go. Yeah, maybe if we go over there again, we'll uh, pick some up. Okay. And we would have our choice of lots of different varieties of Cinnamon Toast Crunch, not just in name, but in actual configuration of the cereal. List there is Cinnamon Graham Toast Crunch, which we had earlier this year. Oh, yeah. You really like that I one. I really like that one. That one was really good. There are Cinnamon Toast Crunch Rolls, which look like little Cinnabons. I want to try those. Cinnamon Toast Crunch Churros. Those are excellent. Really? Yeah. There's Chocolate Toast Crunch, Sugar Cookie Toast Crunch at uh, holiday time. That's coming up now. You know what we should do, Dad? What's that? We should make Oreo Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Oreo Cinnamon Toast Crunch. I mean, I guess you could do that. There are cinnamon flavored Oreos. We're going to talk about one of those today. Yeah. Yep. You could also have Peanut Butter Toast Crunch. Peanut Butter Toast Crunch. Yeah, I make peanut butter toast sometimes in the morning. I don't put cinnamon on it, but I. it's really nice to have a, like a big thick slice of wheat toast with peanut butter on top. You should try that with the cinnamon. And, and add cinnamon to it too? Yeah. That's not a bad idea. Maybe I'll do that next time. You should do that tomorrow. Tomorrow, I should do it tomorrow. We're going to like speed run this. Yeah. You know what I definitely have had? What? French Toast Crunch. French Toast Crunch is really good. French Toast Crunch? French Toast Crunch. The pieces look like little pieces of actual toast. They look like slices of toast and they have sort of like a cinnamony maple flavor like you would for French toast covered in maple syrup. These were very popular in the 90s. They were discontinued and then they were brought back again a few years ago. I feel like I tried those with you. Yeah, you might have. They're super good. There's Frosted Toast Crunch, which is sort of like Sugar Cookie Toast Crunch. Dulce de Leche Toast Crunch, that's caramely. And then uh, for this holiday season, they're bringing back again Apple Pie Toast Crunch. Ooh, we have to try that. I've never actually had that. That would be pretty good. Well, I haven't either. Liz, you know what there is now in our current year of 2022? What? Cinefuego Toast Crunch. Oh, what no. What do you think that is? It's spicy toast. Yeah, crunch. that's right. An attempt by General Mills to cash in on the flaming hot phenomenon, like flaming hot Cheetos. Oh goodness. They add spicy pepper to the traditional cinnamon toast square cinnamon toast crunch squares. And uh, it's meant to be eaten as a snack. They come in a resealable bag. Like, Although people actually do that? Yeah, they sure do. There's uh, advertising copy that says you should also try it with milk. I don't think that makes a lot of sense. Uh, milk dulls the heat sensation from capsaicin that you get in peppers. So do I don't know that it? that would work. Do I want to try Cinefuego Toast Crunch? Yeah. No, but like with milk. With milk? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. We'll have to see about that. Yeah. Yeah, there's lots of different crossover type snacks for Cinnamon Toast Crunch too. You can buy just plain cinna dust in a shaker that you won't sprinkle on other foods. So really? if you want like, yeah, if you wanted like instead of your own cinnamon sugar mixture, if you wanted the proprietary cinna dust, you can get that. Ooh. You can get Cinnamon Toast Crunch oatmeal. Have you ever tried that? I haven't, but it makes sense. It's still a breakfast food. That's pretty straightforward. Yeah. There's Cinnamon Toast Crunch flavored coffee creamer. Coffee creamer? Yeah. I don't think, you know, your mom likes flavored coffee creamers. I don't think she'd like that one though. Cinnamon's not her number one flavor. Yeah, me neither really. Nope. There's a Cinnamon Toast Crunch spread, which is sort of like a peanut butter but it's made of Cinnamon Ooh. Toast Crunch. You've had uh, Speculus cookie butter, right? Yeah. Yeah, I it's kind of like that. Remember when I was like packing school snacks? That's still sitting in the closet. Oh, you should you should eat that. It's probably gross now. I don't know. It's it's sealed up. It's probably still okay. Listen, there is Cinnamon Toast Crunch popcorn. Ooh. Yeah, we, when we get into popcorn flavors, they're still good, but we're kind of losing the uh, breakfast-themed food thread here. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> coming full circle back around again to this kind of thing, when we talked about the pumpkin spice latte list, there are cinnamon toast crunch scented candles. 
I feel like we have something like that. Yeah, I, in fact, I think that might be pretty nice, actually. I wouldn't mind if we lit a candle and the house smelled like Cinnamon Toast Crunch all the time. I probably would. <laughs> you wouldn't like it? Mm, probably not. I you know, know my favorite candle? What's that? That Yankee one we put up during Christmas and it smells like pine trees. Oh, that is a good one. That sets off your mom's allergies a little bit. Or the one in the bathroom and it's like red. Oh, yeah. That's like uh, mulberry, maybe. Yeah, and then one I have in my room that I'm not allowed to light, but it still smells really good. Yeah. And the apple one in my room. I have two in my room. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this has been Candle Talk with Alyssa. We hope you enjoyed the show. (laughs) Stay tuned for more Yankee Candle Talk. (laughs) You can have your own spinoff where you just talk about candles. Yeah, you know what? I What I should make my own candles. What would you call your candle podcast? Just like Candlecast? Candles with Liz. Candles with Liz. Yeah. That sounds like an Etsy store. It sounds like one of those like Macari ripoffs. Yeah, that's right. Candles with list. You know what, guys? Um, if you think that I should make a candle podcast, um, you should definitely um, follow us on wherever you choose to be social. <laughs> yeah, tweet at Alyssa and let her know that you want to hear all about candle cast with Alyssa. <laughs> yeah, Dad, <laughs> we'll make we'll make a video if if we get like if we get comments. I'll I'll put up a poll on Twitter that says should Alyssa make candles with Liz? And oh then boy. if we get if we get more than a hundred More than a hundred? If we get at least a hundred. Wow. I'll do it. Well, okay. You're setting a, a fairly high bar for yourself there. But yeah, we'll see. I think that's a pretty good idea. Dad, I'm setting a high goal because I kinda don't want to do that. Oh. Well I hey, I'm proud of your ambition, kiddo. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Uh and speaking of pride. Cinnamon Toast Crunch has a lot of pride in its crossover promotions. Just last month, there was a limited edition Spider-Man box of Cinnamon Toast Crunch that was limited to 1,962 issues because it was celebrating the 1962 debut of Spider-Man. Did we ever get that? We sure didn't. I entered the lottery and didn't get any. Oh. You know what I could get, though, if I wanted to go on, uh, like, Goat or, um, what's uh, what's that website where you can buy shoes? Why can't I think of this? I have no clue. I don't know. It's like a hype beastie website. I can't believe I can't remember this. My friends are going to make fun of me. But you could buy Cinnamon Toast Crunch branded Kyrie Irving basketball shoes. Is it just like a shoe store? Uh, It's like a reselling store. You can sell shoes and baseball cards and all sorts of interesting stuff there. It's like fancy eBay. Oh. Yeah. Speaking of those Kyrie Irving Cinnamon Toast Crunch shoes list, they, and they actually looked pretty good. The color was like a Cinnadust brown. There's a Nike swoosh on the side, and the swoosh and the sole have the speckles of the box art colors of Cinnamon Toast Crunch. It's a, a pretty well-considered design. Mm. But there is a guy, a comedian, a TV writer, a music producer, and rapper. His name is Jensen Karp, and he owned a pair of these Kyrie Irving Cinnamon Toast Crunch shoes. But Liz, he was also connected to Cinnamon Toast Crunch in another way. How? Here we go. Oh, boy. Oh God. In 2021, Jensen Karp found what appeared to be cinnadust crusted shrimp tails in his box of Cinnamon Toast Crunch. He found shrimp tails in his box of cereal. Ew. Yeah, so he sent a message to General Mills, and then he posted a photo of them on his Twitter account, and then things started to get weird, Alyssa. Oh, no. Yeah. Is this like the girl who tried to sell a puffy Dorito? Do you uh, remember that? <laughs> <laughs> and people are like offering her a hundred thousand dollars yeah it's i will say it is sort of like that in a sense that it is a piece of weird twitter that happened so here's <laughs> what happened general mills wrote back to him and they claimed that what he saw what he had taken a photo of what was in his box was not actually a shrimp tail but they were rather just clumps of ingredients for cinnamon toast crunch that hadn't been mixed together well and they were just in the shape of shrimp tails so this guy is looking at these things which very clearly look like shrimp tails And he's seeing this response from the company, and he accused the company of gaslighting him, of lying to him. What is gaslighting? Just lying? Yeah, it's sort of like a fancy way to say lying to somebody very specifically over a period of time. So he looked through the bag. He had bought one of those bags from, it was either Costco or Sam's Club or something like that, a box that has two bags in it. So he looked through the bag. He found more shrimp tails. He found these little black pieces, some out in the open and some adhered to the cereal that he thought maybe were rat feces. You remember what feces is, right? No. Uh, Baby mice. No, it's not baby mice. That's from a movie, Donnie Darko. (laughs) Rat feces is rat poop. Ew. Yeah, gross. And then he even found a piece of string that looked like uh, some dental floss. Oh. Yeah, so this is all very weird. He claimed the bag inside of the box looked like it might have been tampered with or taped shut. 
And somebody on Twitter that was responding to him said it looked like maybe an animal had nested in some dry cereal mix and it was doing a thing that uh, rodents do, which is called collecting, which is where they pick stuff up and bring it back to where they live, which might explain the rat feces, obviously, and then the string and the shrimp tails. So here's what happened. Wait, but Dad, why would the bag be taped together? Yeah, I don't know. That's kind of weird, and it's unresolved. A lot of this is unresolved, which makes it strange and mysterious, uh, as far as, you know, serial tampering on Twitter goes as being mysterious. So <laughs> he was uh, he was pretty upset that General Mills didn't respond to him in a way that he deemed appropriate. They had attempted to send him a new box of cereal and some vouchers, but he declined them after saying that they were calling him a liar, obviously. Well, uh, I would, too. Yeah, so then he said that he was going to take the shrimp tails to a laboratory, a local laboratory, so that he could verify their origins, but he couldn't find one that would test them. And well, obviously, yeah. So why and, would they test a piece of cinnamon toast? Crunch? Well, there are laboratories that will test, you know, whatever it is, if you pay them enough, but he couldn't find one that had the right equipment to actually determine whether or not this was a piece of shellfish. General Mills offered to take the pieces and have them tested themselves, but he didn't trust them at that point. And he said, no way, I'm not sending you this stuff. You called me a liar already. So the cereal company recommended that he contact local law enforcement and turn well, the cereal pieces over to the police, which is crazy. This is all over cereal. Yeah, this is such a strange story. Then the New York Times contacted him and he gave an interview to them. The New York Times discovered that General Mills, the cereal company that makes Cinnamon Toast Crunch, had already been sued 10 years earlier for a batch of contaminated blueberries that they got from a supplier <laughs> that they were going to put in some scones, like a pastry that had, wait for it, Liz pieces of shrimp inside the blueberry shipment <laughs> yeah isn't that weird why that's just what happened and hey you remember the tv show boy meets world right um i've never watched that but you know what it is right yeah well the girl on the show uh the character topanga i know her yeah the actress that played her she's married to the guy that found the shrimp tails really? in the box of cinnamon toast crunch well, I bet she, he was quite the catch then. Oh, well, I'm glad you brought that up. That's a good segment switcher upper because things started to get even weirder than that. Once this became very popular and went sort of viral on Twitter, a whole bunch of people from this guy's past came out and accused him on Twitter of being basically a big abusive jerk, a manipulative narcissist who took advantage of people and was very mean to women and ex-girlfriends. Isn't like a narcissist like a person that's like obsessed with himself? Yeah, that's right. Wow. Yeah, so some people that he had known in the past were saying those things about him on Twitter. And ironically, one of them was a woman who played on a girls basketball team in Los Angeles that was called the Pistol Shrimps. So to completely get full circle, here was an assessment from somebody else on Twitter. They said, a man named Carp, this Carp is a kind of fish, married to a woman whose last name is Fishel, like fish, found some shrimp tails in a box of Cinnamon Toast Crunch. The cereal was purchased from the Costco on a street called Topanga Canyon Boulevard. And his wife played Topanga on Boy Meets World. Meanwhile, this guy, Carp, used to be a guest on a podcast called the Pistol Shrimp Podcast. Isn't that so coincidental, all of that? At this point, it seems like they're doing this on purpose. Yeah, well, here's the thing. This was more than a year ago. There is still no update on the laboratory analysis of those pieces. This was only a year ago? Yeah, this is very recent. Oh, I thought you were talking about like a while back. No, this is a thing that happened like in the cultural zeitgeist of 2021. The great Twitter shrimp tail cinnamon toast crunch incident. Oh, what a rabbit hole. Okay, well, um... Liz, do you want to go even further down the rabbit hole? Sure. This takes us all the way back to 1987 to a promotional commercial for cinnamon toast crunch called the Three Bakers, Liz. There used to be three mascots for cinnamon toast crunch. You know, cereal mascots like Tony the Tiger for Frosted Flakes and the Little Bee for Honey Nut Cheerios, the Trix Rabbit, Lucky the Leprechaun, Captain Frosted Crunch. Frosted Flakes? Yeah, Frosted Flakes. Tony the Tiger, they're great, that guy. You don't know who Tony the Tiger is. No. Oh my goodness. I don't even know how Frosted Flakes are. Well, guess what? You are about to meet Wendell the Baker from Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Wendell. Yeah, so in 1987, there's a commercial called The Three Bakers, and there are three bakers in a factory who are baking Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Now, in 1990, one of them gets identified in a little game on the back of the box as Wendell the Baker. So Wendell is the elderly baker. He's an old guy. He's got white hair and glasses. There were two other bakers with him who we later found out in non-canonical information that were named Bob and Quello. Quello is an interesting name, not very common for a for a baker as a first name, right? They were never publicly named, but Cinnamon Quello. Toast Crunch says Wendell, Bob, and Quello. Quello. Are they like Italian folks? Uh, they don't look Italian, but I don't know. What do they look? 
They look like uh, cartoon bakers. Oh. Yeah. They weren't real people. They were cartoons. So here's the interesting thing. In 1987, we have all three of them. In 1990, we find out that Wendell is the name of the primary baker. By 1991, Bob and Quello have completely disappeared and only Wendell is left on the box. They just vanish without a trace and no one knows where they go and it's never explained until very recently when someone with a blog on the internet wrote to General Mills and said, what the heck happened to Bob and Quello? And it turns out there's a very benign explanation for this, which is General Mills did some market research and they found out that customers liked Wendell the best of the three bakers. And they decided they were just going to feature him more prominently and do away with the other two. But, Liz. What? We never really found out what happened to Bob and Quello. Bob and Quello. Yeah. So there were two sort of internet rumors around this. The first is that perhaps Wendell, in a fit of jealousy, because he was older and they were younger and he was envious of their youth, murdered Bob and Quello and then baked them into the cereal. Oh. Gross. Or, alternatively, that he might have drowned them in a cinnamon river a cinnamon swirl river but dad do you want to know what really happened what's that i baked them into my yankee candle you you melted them into your yankee candle into my cinnamon toast yankee candle and your cinnamon toast yankee candle smells like bob and quello (laughs) yes oh my goodness i will say though i really did like the three bakers commercials that they had in the late 80s because of the way that they said the name and the little jingle at the end of the commercial and that's still how i say it did you watch it no Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Wendell, Bob, and Quello. Yeah, that's right. And then in 2009, Liz, Wendell disappeared forever. He was he was gone. He was replaced as a mascot by sentient Cinnamon Toast Crunch squares that were kind of like weird and cannibalistic. They would eat each other. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you've seen the tagline, crave those crazy squares, that kind of thing. I've never seen the tagline, but I've seen like, oh, you know what that reminds me of? What's that? The goldfish commercials. Where the goldfish eat each other? They're just like swimming around, chomping on each other. Yeah. Yeah, it's very weird. I don't, I, again, I said it earlier with that, uh, you know, good snack for kids, weird adults, and our life advertising. Forms. Weird advertising, saying everything is crazy. Like Pop-Tarts did it. We talked about that last week. Pop-Tarts, crazy good. That whole thing. Crazy good. Yeah, this, it's starting to feel a little bit like the late 1990s when everything was extreme. There was like extreme yogurt and wild berry Pop-Tarts coincidentally were like the extreme Pop-Tarts because they had purple and blue on them and they were swirled in a certain way. Yeah. Yeah. It's very weird. There's a lot of that kind of strange advertising and sometimes, Liz. What? Advertising goes a little bit viral. There was an ad meme between 2004 and 2006 for Cinnamon Toast Crunch because uh, in those old advertisements from 1995, when they added the cinnamon swirls, the tagline was the taste you can see. And part of the lead up for those commercials was to show a normal person doing normal person things. And then the announcer would say like, the lifeguard can see the kids swimming, but can he see why kids love the taste of Cinnamon Toast Crunch? And everybody thought that was funny in the mid 2000s and they would sort of evolve it into superheroes. Can Batman see why kids love Cinnamon Toast Crunch? Oh. And then it got sort of absurd from there. It would be like, from Lord of the Rings, the Eye of Sauron can see all of Middle Earth, but can it see why kids love Cinnamon Toast Crunch? Did you ever make one up? Uh, No, I never made an image macro of the Cinnamon Toast Crunch ad copy between 2004 and 2006. Oh. No, I didn't need to because I kind of like, I already knew everything that I wanted to know about Cinnamon Toast Crunch, which was pretty much how good it was. Liz. Yeah. Here's a question that gets asked a lot. What? Is Cinnamon Toast Crunch the best cereal? I don't know. Find out next on Junk Cute. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. If you look online, there are lots of places where Cinnamon Toast Crunch is sort of like the default answer for the best cereal when people will rate and review and rank lots and lots of breakfast cereals. You know what I also like? What's that? I like, um, what's it called? Captain Crunch. I like Captain Crunch a lot too. That was my favorite cereal when I was a kid. It's just when it gets soggy, it's gross. Yeah. And here's the thing about both Cinnamon Toast Crunch and Captain Crunch. They are not kind to the roof of your mouth. If you eat a whole bunch of these, they are like... Because they are originally very crunchy and crisp when they're in the milk, you can like really tear up the roof of your mouth. It's like chewing on razor blades sometimes with Captain Crunch. Yeah. Cinnamon Toast Crunch isn't that bad, but there are lots of people that think, in fact, it's quite good. The Los Angeles Times Serial Power Rankings had it at number one. USA Today named it their bracket champion in their big competition last year. The online magazine The Athletic had it tied for second, and Cinnamon Toast Crunch churros were tied for first list. But what will junk feud rate it? Well, I don't know, but... I gotta say, it's the favorite cereal of lots of people, and Liz, it's time 
for my favorite part of the show. Alyssa reads the ingredients. Alyssa reads the ingredients. Are you ready? Oh, that's a lot of ingredients. Go ahead, kiddo. Okay. So there is whole grain wheat, sugar, rice flour, canola and or sunflower oil, fructose, what what is that? Maltodextrin. Great job. Dextrose, salt, cinnamon, triso, trisodium, phosphate, soy, le- lecithin, 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 car- caramel color, BHT added to preserve freshness, vitamin and minerals, calcium carbonate, vitamin C, sodium uh, ascorbate, iron and zinc, mineral nutrients, A, B vitamin. Niacinamide, vitamin B6, um, f- fibrodoxin hydrochloride. Very good. Vitamin B1, thiamine monotrate, vitamin A, polymate, vitamin B2, ribo- ri- riboflavin, AB vitamin, folic acid, vitamin B12, vitamin D3. That's a lot of stuff. Dad. Yeah. My... Um, my teacher for consumer science mm-hmm. told me if a cereal ever has that, it's usually not good for you. Trisodium phosphate? Yeah. Wow, interesting. I didn't know that. You know, Liz, there's another thing in this ingredient list that some people think is not good for you too. It's also called BHT, which the note here in the ingredient list is that it's added to preserve freshness, which is exactly what it does. BHT in cereals is a preservative that's used in very small amounts in cereal bag liners to help the cereal stay fresh, obviously. Oh. Here's an interesting thing. There was a viral TikTok a few months ago that called the tick-tack. inclusion... TikTok. TikTok. I sound like I'm from Boston. Yeah, hey, TikTok. <laughs> well, that was a little bit of New York and Boston together. That sounded like tick-tack. Bugs <laughs> Bugs Bunny <laughs> from the South Shore. So the viral TikTok from a few months ago called the inclusion of BHT in Cinnamon Toast Crunch ingredients disturbing due to alleged carcinogenic properties. Do you know what carcinogenic means? No clue. Yeah, it's something that causes cancer. Oh, is that? That's not good. No, it's not good. And what happened is BHT is commonly confused with another additive called BHA. Now, BHA does have proven links to cancerous outcomes, but BHT is generally considered safe for consumption by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. It is banned in some other countries from use in foods, but so far it looks like there's a fairly decent body of historical literature and research that's been unable to prove a link between BHT and cancer. So that's good. That is good. Yeah. You know what else is good, Liz? What? All that fortification in this cereal. Where it says vitamins and minerals, and it lists all of those different types of vitamins. Yeah, there yeah, are a lot Those are all added vitamins. after the fact. They're not naturally occurring in the cereal, but that's to, uh, to try to keep the kids that are choosing to eat sugar cereal in the morning at least a little bit healthier. Yeah. My, my teacher also told me if sugar is the first, second, or third ingredient, it's also not good for you. Yeah. Well, she's right. And guess what? What? Sugar is ingredient number two right there. Yeah. So but, we sh- probably shouldn't be eating this whole No, bunch. that's true. But you know what? It's so good. It tastes really good, and we should try it out right now. So, Liz, let's get to the rules of the game. Yeah. Junk food is a culinary clash to see which treat will be crowned the undisputed champion of snacks. It's a King of the Mountain-style battle in which the reigning champ takes on a new challenger each week to see which snack reigns supreme in Liz. Yeah. The reigning defending undisputed champion of snacks is... Movie Theater Popcorn. Movie Theater Popcorn. This is its fifth title defense after defeating Pop-Tarts last week. Liz. Why'd you say it like that? Movie Theater Popcorn. I don't know. It's I'm doing like the wrestling introduction thing. Oh, okay. Can anyone stop the reign of terror of Movie Theater Popcorn, Liz? <laughs> you did it again. I did it again. Okay. Well, we're going to try this week with our challenger, Cinnamon Toast Crunch, which we already tried with milk. And I have yes. some here that we can try without milk. And what? you said... You it's wanted that piece. Not like you got like the holy grail of cinnamon toast crunch pieces list, which is like two pieces stuck together, so it's more like a, a tortilla strip instead of just one square. Yeah, those are always the most fun to eat. Oh my goodness, Dad. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try mine. List. It's so good. <laughs> Even just dry eating it like a snack is excellent. The smell of cinnamon is warm and comforting and a little bit spicy without being completely overpowering. It's not really like a candle. It is like a very subtle scent. You know? Way to bring my candle talk. <laughs> Liz is candle cast. Back from the dead. Liz is candle cast. The crunch on the squares is excellent. And I think a lot of that is the mixture of wheat flour and rice flour. The rice additive is like imperative for crispiness, I think. 
Yeah. In fact, you can notice this, just like Rice Krispies, when you pour milk on Cinnamon Toast Crunch, it does the snap, crackle, pop thing that you get with, with rice-based cereals. Yeah. It's very good. These are much better than corn-based cereals, I think. Anything with an oat or wheat or rice mixture, in my opinion, superior to corn-based cereals. Superior. Yeah. The flavor is just right. The mixture of cinnamon sugar and the dust, the ratios are, I think, as close to perfect as you can get in a cereal like this. Mm-hmm. It's wonderful. But Liz. What? Check this out. What? We have a run-in. A run-in? Yeah. Can oh, you no. believe it? I think I know what it is. I was able to get my hands on some Cinnamon Toast Crunch Creamy Cinnamon Spread. What are we going to spread it on? Uh, well, nothing. We just have some spoons. Ew. I just, got in, I just got this in the mail yesterday. I ordered it in like August and it came oh. in the mail yesterday. So we're going to try it out. I want to give it a shot. We, this was me and my dad's New Year's re- resolution to have junk food. Yeah, that's right. I think we're doing pretty good so far. Yeah. So here, I'm going to give you a little spoonful no, of the cinnamon. No, I want to scoop mine. Oh, you want to scoop mine? Go ahead. Here's a little ASMR with Alyssa. Oh, boy. I'm editing all this out. No. Okay. Okay, so you've got a little scoop of cinnamon spread. It's very creamy. It, it looks smells? like... It looks like creamy peanut butter. It's a little lighter than peanut butter. It looks like maybe almond butter. It doesn't smell like anything, really. It smells a little cinnamony. It smells a lot like the cinna dust on Cinnamon Toast Crunch, honestly. Mine doesn't smell like anything. Uh, real quick, ingredients. Brown sugar, canola oil, skim milk, palm oil, cinnamon, soy lecithin, natural flavor, salt. So there's, there's not really that much in this. Just in case you want to make it. Yeah, I'm it's try uh, it. cinnamon sugar and oil, more or less. Wow. All right, give it a shot. You know what this tastes like? What's that? It tastes like the frosting you get on a... Cinnamon bun. Well, you're right. Yeah, it does. It, the, the brown sugar really comes through. It's kind of like the like the gooey cinnamony brown sugar part in the middle. Liz. Yeah. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to put Cinnamon Toast Crunch spread on a Cinnamon Toast Crunch square. <laughs> and then I'm going to top it with the other end and make a Cinnamon Toast Crunch sandwich. Ooh, that's really good. Yeah, that's not bad at all. Double <laughs> shot of cinnamon sugar. Ooh. Okay, so hey, it's good. I want another scoop. You want more? Go ahead. Yeah, just a little bit. So the spread is good. It's interesting. It's not as essential as the cereal, Here obviously. Go. And what that means, Liz, what? is that it's crunch time. Oh, very good crunch. Oh, that was a good crunch. We rate our snacks using a tier list from sprinkles to fun dip. Sprinkles to fun dip. So snacks can be graded A, B, C, D, or F with the very best treats earning the elusive S tier ranking. The following contest is scheduled for one serving. One serving. And it's for the undisputed championship of junk food. Liz, what do you think about Cinnamon Toast Crunch? I want to hear about the bliss point. Well, there's, there's, well, um, there's a lot of sugar. A lot of sugar. Is there fat? Only if you add milk. Oh. Well, in that case, is there salt? There is salt, yep. So, there's a perfect combination between sugar and salt. (laughs) Very good. That's how you would say it. I would. And you know what? What? I think these are so good. I think I'm willing to give Cinnamon Toast Crunch the S tier ranking. I mean, this is an elite snack for me. With milk, obviously, as a breakfast cereal, as a dessert. When I come home from playing, like, pickup soccer on a Wednesday or Thursday night, or if we get done volleyball late and my body is just craving something to have in it, I will pour, like, a big, big bowl of Cinnamon Toast Crunch in milk. And if there's still milk in the bottom of the bowl when I'm done that first bowl, I will pour more cereal right on top of that until the milk is all gone. I'm just not sure if it beats movie theater popcorn. Yeah, and that's fair. So I think, I don't want to unduly influence you here, but I think for me, if given the option, as good as crunchy salt is, as great as movie theater popcorn is, I think probably I prefer Cinnamon Toast Crunch as a junk food a little bit more. But that's just me. That's my opinion. That's the way that I think it goes. You know what? I want to hear what you have to say. I think you're right. Wow, you think I'm right? Yeah. So what's your ranking? I'll give it maybe like, oh, S tier. Wow, an S tier ranking from Alyssa, which means, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. I can believe it. I had this planned out in my head. Down goes <laughs> Fraser. Oh, you had this planned out already, <laughs> you yeah. weasel. I thought this was spontaneous on the, <laughs> on the moment. But you know what that means? Cinnamon what? Toast Crunch, S tier ranking, elite snack, and Alyssa. What? Your winner and new reigning, defending, undisputed champion of junk food, Cinnamon Toast Crunch. 
Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Wow, how is that for a last ditch effort and a big episode right before we go into Merry Snacksmas in the holiday season? Dad, you were drinking your water and I said, I think you're right and you almost spit it. I did. I almost did a spit take (laughs) right into the microphone. That would have been so funny. Man, that's exciting. Oh, yeah. Wow, I am invigorated by that. Cinnamon Toast Crunch takes down the champ. Wow. Oh. Alyssa. Yeah. I'm also invigorated by this. Guess what? What? We found Snickerdoodle Oreos. They are so good. We will invoke the Oreo rule. Liz, what did you think about Snickerdoodle Oreos? Tell me about them. They were really good. They were really good. This is like like upper tier of Oreo cookies, I think, for sure. As far as the seasonal Oreos go or the special limited editions, this is like near the top. You know that like birthday cake frosting? Uh Uh-huh. Like that Funfetti frosting? Yep. And it's just like the confetti bit, and it's so good. Yeah, these had like a cinnamon-flavored frosting with little crunchy sprinkles in them. Those little crunchy sugar crystals in the the, uh, cream in the middle, that really elevates the Oreo, I think. Yeah. The cookie was good, not like elite, but the cookie itself was good. It was like the golden Oreo cookie with a little bit of a sort of a buttery, almost eggy cinnamon flavor like you would expect out of a snickerdoodle. Yeah. Yeah, they were pretty good. I'd say probably these were the best, the best of the Oreo rule snacks we've had so far. Of any of the snacks that Amir brought us, of the Ooh. Brookie Oreos, of the Pumpkin Spice Oreos, I think these are these are probably the tops for that as far as the Oreo rule goes. I don't know about that, though. Oh, no. which What did you like better, that one candy bar that he gave us? The Crunchies. Oh, the Little Crunchies. Yeah, they were really good. You could just like pop those in like chips. I know. You guys, ate, like, you guys ate a whole bag of those in... Like two minutes. Days. No, two. it was that first day you ate the entire bag. Oh yeah. My brother's friends were over. Yeah, I was I was uh questioning my sanity when I saw you put the bag down on the table and then I turned my back and it was gone. That was really funny. Lissa. What? I have another important question. What? Because each week we ask a very important question on this show. Can you deep fry this week's snack? Will it deep fry? Probably. Yeah, it does. Grossly enough. I mean These are already baked grains, so there's not much to fry out of them. But there is a restaurant in San Diego called Chicken Charlie's that at the Orange County Fair in California will deep fry breakfast cereals, Cinnamon Toast Crunch and Tricks. Huh. Yeah, I don't don't know. That doesn't sound very good. But there are some pretty good ways that you can use Cinnamon Toast Crunch as an ingredient when you're deep frying. Ice cream. Yeah, you can use them as a coating for fried ice cream if you crush them up. That's a really good application. There are little frozen Cinnamon Toast Crunch snack bites that you could... Air fry, you could make fried French toast with cinnamon toast crunch as a like a coating for it. And then yeah. uh, a throwback to what we were talking about earlier, Liz. Yeah. You could make cinnamon toast crunch crusted fried <laughs> shrimp. No. Isn't that disgusting? Yeah. Yeah. You know what's not disgusting? What? The fun that we have when we do a segment, when we hit the back of the box. The back of the box. Yeah. It's time to check out the back of the box, a weekly segment where we play a little game. Alyssa, would you like to play a game? I would love to play a game. Uh, brief aside before we go to the segment, the back of the Cinnamon Toast Crunch box itself is really underwhelming. I will say, General Mills, you need to step your game up. If you look at the back of a Cinnamon Toast Crunch box, it's just more art. There's no copy. There are no games, no mazes, no word finds, no scrambles, nothing. It's just a picture of the mascot. Yeah, like, come on. Boring. Step it up. Seriously. Seriously. Dad, can we get sued for that? That's like some harsh words. <laughs> no, we're giving them constructive feedback. Oh, okay. And uh, we're about to get constructive here for ourselves because, listen, this week's segment is Try Hard 2, Try Harder. Try Harder. Try Hard is a segment in which we try a food that we don't think we're going to like. <laughs> Oh, boy. What was last time again? Oh, we had those really gross Brock's tailgate oh, candy oh, corns. Oh, no, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. No, I'm leaving. I don't have those. But this time, Liz, I do have something that we talked about already. Oh, oh, goodness. This year's attempt at a viral sensation by General Mills and Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Ew. This is Cinefuego Toast Crunch. I have some here, Liz. I want to open it. All right, go it. ahead. There's a resealable pouch. There you go. Much better. There's a zipper pouch, like a Ziploc bag. You can open up and inside. They look the same. They, oh yeah, we better not get these mixed together <laughs> with the other ones. They look the same. I'm going to, okay, so. Can I see it smell? I think they smell good. They smell like a cinnamon candle, actually. Not oh, like they do. Not like the sort of toasty, mellow, soft cinnamon sugar of the regular Cinnamon Toast Crunch. This smells like a very aggressive, very artificial candy style 
cinnamon. This smells like red hots or cinnamon hearts or like a stick of big red gum. I was expecting them to smell like different. No, yeah, I was expecting like like earthy floral notes of real pepper, not like candy cinnamon spice. All right, so that's a that's actually a positive development, which means these yeah, might not be these might not be that gross. Oh, there's like bits of pepper. Bits of pepper, you say. See it? These don't look any different to me. I would I would absolutely mistake these for regular cinnamon toast crunch. Me All too. right, I'm going to try two of these right now. I'm going to try one. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one, crunch. Oh, wow. Yeah, my... wow. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that has got a... Wow, it's like it's nailing the sides of my tongue here. This is... Oh, my goodness. This has got like a back of the throat hit that I was not expecting. It's weird because... The way that they look and the way oh the way that they look and the way they smell. Yeah. They They're oh hot. They're not God. like it's not like painful hot. This isn't like a searing like ghost pepper habanero. It's like wing sauce. It burns. But it's persistent in the back of my throat and on my tongue. Yeah. It's like uh it's like that sort of harsh chemical burn of artificial cinnamon. Like if you you know the little red hot cinnamon hearts that you get like around Valentine's Day? If you crunch down on too many of those at once. It's sort of like the fireball whiskey taste, like that kind of cinnamon. These are oh. these are not bad. Like I don't want to eat a lot of these, but as a dare food, as like oh. a weird challenge kind of thing. Wait, you know what, Dad? I wanna I'm gonna play a game with you. Okay, so we're gonna take some of these out, pour some in. Oh, you're doing Cinefuego Toast Crunch Roulette? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're mixing regular cinnamon toast crunch. Oh, I'm not gonna be able to with tell the difference. Cinefuego toast crunch. So you, gotta put a you cannot see the difference at all. You you So you do like can. one at a time. All right, ready? Okay, I'll go first. Okay. And how about we just try to guess by like our facial facial features? Okay. I think you had a regular cinnamon toast crunch square. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank goodness. Your turn, Dad. All right, my turn. Let's see if I get a real one or a spicy one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing you had a spicy oh, one. Oh, yeah, that was a hot one. That was Cinefuego for sure. Because you could st keep like a straight face for two seconds, and then it starts to burn. Like really bad. Yeah, it is like a little slow lingering burn there. That's kind of interesting. Listen, I will say, this is not good. I wouldn't want to eat this as a real food, but this is Ooh, an impressive- two for two. Wow, you're lucky. This is an impressive feat of snack food engineering right here. I am suitably impressed by General Mills. I probably will never again pay, you know, five and a half bucks for a small pouch of breakfast cereal, but you know, for what they've should... done with what they have- we should bring these down to mom and, That's have, pretty her, good. and have her try one. Oh, she's definitely not going to do that. I'm No, I'm going to try to play the roulette with her. Okay. Well, that's not a bad idea. Endless. <laughs> what? We're going to try to get out of here. Yeah, because I have a soccer game. That's right. This podcast should reach you in excellent condition, satisfaction guaranteed, or your money back. If you've got a question for us, you can write to the address on the label. That's junkfoodpod at gmail.com. Hey, Liz. Yeah. This podcast has contained your recommended daily allowance of fun. Fun. For more, go to Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, or wherever you choose to be social. Find us at Junk Food Pod. You can stream with us on Twitch, watch fun size snack reviews on YouTube, buy merch on T Public, and fund us on Patreon at Junk Food Pod for exclusive plugs. And don't forget to catch all the snacks in each and every week wherever you listen to podcasts. Until we see you again, for Alyssa, I'm Mike. Pasta is on ya. Don't get any on ya. Bye. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Spicy.